Hey guys, I want to get a fishing report up for you right here at the beginning of the week. Now, most of the pros who are down here fishing the open are on the water. You can see some of them parked back here behind me. I've seen a lot of them fishing around. I'll tell you, I'm seeing them out way deep and I've seen them up super shallow. I did a little bit of fishing. I've got some footage from the weekend that I'll get posted hopefully later this week or early next week, early the following week. I got a little bit of footage from, I guess this would be Friday when I got out. I was playing, mostly playing with the new with my new, uh, I haven't said this to you guys yet, but I did get a live scope. I went and got a Garmin live scope from the nice folks at uh, Jones Electronics there in Texarkana, and I got some great footage coming up from you guys. Some installation footage, some troubleshooting footage on batteries and on trolling motors and how to fix some stuff and a recall on your Ultrex motor. So some great stuff coming up that I'll get posted over the next couple of weeks. But what I wanted to post for you guys today is, I know I've had at least a dozen uh, so by the way, so you got boaters or pros on the on the on one side of the boat in the Bassmaster Opens, and in the back you got co-anglers. Well, my buddy Billy says they're not co-anglers; they're co-pros. So I know a lot of you co-pros are going to be packing to come down here, and I've gotten a lot of questions about kind of how you're catching your fish. So one of the things, so you're going to probably have one of two scenarios play out down here. You're either going to have a guy who's up shallow fishing around the grass or you're gonna have a guy who's out deep fishing away from the grass. So I spent Friday in the shallow grass, basically learning the live scope and anticipating these fish moving shallow. So these fish start should start moving shallow as this weather cools off. It's gonna be really, really nice next week. And I threw quite a bit. You're gonna see, actually right off the bat here, I catch just a, it felt like a great big fish, but it, it got sideways hooked on a, uh, on a whopper plopper. So let's check that out. You this isn't a two pounder. He was in the ground. Oh, he bowled on it. That's why I couldn't pull him free. He went up there and squatted at it. That's why I couldn't pull him free. Keeper, but that's about all he was. But man, you know, he got sideways in that grass and I couldn't pull him free. Another one spooked right there where he... Oh, there's some good hydrilla working in Haven right now. Good. So you see there, I caught the one, and then I had another one eat it right there in the prop wash behind it. I did not catch that second fish, uh, but then I, I, I was seeing fish move around, and I kind of backed around over there, and I got my little uh, belly spin uh, bait out. So what I'm throwing here is I'm throwing the big six, six cents swim bait on an owner 
uh, belly weighted hook with the spinner hanging off the bottom, a bottom spin, whatever you want to call it. And I caught one, two, I caught four or five fish on that bait. Biggest one's about two and a half pounds. And I'm not going to show you a whole bunch of little fish I caught because I wanted to kind of give you more information on this video than watch me fishing. But I think let's show you one of those right here. No size, he's just buried in the grass. And I had my drag back down. Boy, just dark as he can be living in that grass up there. Living in the grass. So that's pretty typical for what I saw, just a lot of those little fish. Uh, and then uh, late, late in the day, or not late in the day, probably lunchtime or a little bit after, I got out my mojo rig. And I caught a bunch of fish on my mojo rig. So if you don't know what a mojo rig is, it is simply, a lot of guys refer to it as a split shot rig. So it's a little barrel style sinker. I've got a uh, one of those little rubber pegs pushed up through there. I usually run it anywhere from 18 to 24 inches behind it. Uh, I'll usually either throw a D-shad or a fluke. That's a fluke or a D-shad made by Yamamoto. So the question I'm getting is, what would you do if you were on the back deck? And, and here's what I would do. So if my guy's fishing shallow around the grass, you better come rigged with a flipping bait. Uh, and it's not happened yet, but it, it could ha it's gonna happen somewhere in the next week or so. So my suggestion would be a three quarter ounce tungsten six cents weight, three quarters plenty big enough for the grass right now. It's not that matted up. I'm flipping a prawn. I either throw Nirvana or black blue. That's my two colors. Nirvana on a bright, clear day, black blue on any day with muted light, whether it's cloudy or rainy or whatever else. If I were you, I would flip it on 25 pound cigar flipping line. And, and I, I don't feel like I can, I feel like I can feel them on, on the big fluorocarbon line just as well as I can on braid. And I just feel like I can get a few more bites. So you, your pro's probably going to be flipping braid. I would be flipping that 25 pound fluorocarbon again because I think you might get a couple bites that won't bite his uh, braid. Now having said that, when those fish first come shallow, they're going to be really green and they're probably just going to be munching. It may not make that big a difference. But if you're behind a good a pro who's good at flipping, you you got to get some bites that he's missing that, he, that aren't biting his stuff. So I would be flipping that fluorocarbon line. Fluorocarbon line. Peg that sinker. Now this is not what I was, this is actually a brush pile bait. And that, by the way, that's the third thing I should mention. But peg the sinker above it and below it with a six cents peg, right? And the reason you want to do that is so that sinker doesn't separate and it falls right straight down through that grass. And by the way, that is the other thing that somebody may be doing to you is, uh, is fishing brush piles. And that's going to be tough as a co angler because usually they're fishing a brush pile and you got to fish around them if that's the case. Uh, I would bring a Carolina rig, which, you know, my Carolina rig, and by the way, so, well, actually, let's finish the grass thing first. So, 
around the grass, I would either be throwing that fluke, I would be throwing a wacky worm, wacky cinco. I like to throw a wacky cinco. The way I rig it is I use 15 pound fluorocarbon. I use an O-ring so I don't keep throwing my cincos off and a little bitty weedless hook. Throw it out there kind of where you sense the end of that grass is and just let it flutter down. You'll get some bites on that this next week. Also, I would suggest you have a wake bait. If he's given you the opportunity, I guess he or she, if you drew a female pro, if there's any down here, gives you a chance to fish that thing around behind them. Say they're working down a grass line on this side. You can fish it out over the top of that scattered grass. So very few places right now at Rayburn is there a grass edge and no more grass. Most There may be, even where you see matted grass, there's tapered grass outside of it. So just because that pro is fishing right down that grass line, you can catch fish and maybe bigger fish sometimes out there on that scattered grass outside of where he's fishing. So I would be working, my saw plastics would be my Mojo and my Cinco. Uh, I would also be throwing that guy right there. I would be throwing a 50 series 6 cents crankbait or a 1.5, whatever your preference is if you're a Strike King person. Um, what else would I be throwing? Oh, a top one. I would be throwing either a, uh, a Whopper Plopper or a walking style bait. I'm, I'm, I like the big six cents walking style bait or even a six cents popper or a yellow magic if you want to throw a popper bait. Uh, so that would be my choice if my pro is up around the grass. I would certainly try to flip behind them, but um, you may or may not have success doing that. Okay, if they are out deeper, I would be number one throwing a Carolina rig because even when if they're throwing a Carolina rig, you can get bites behind them on a Carolina rig. I throw 20 pound main line, that's that Super Duty 3 rod I like so much. Great big reel because it holds wide spool reel, holds a lot of line. 20 pound in Vizx main line, 15 pound in Vizx leader. I throw a three quarter or a one ounce sinker, almost always a one ounce sinker. And then I'm partial to smaller hooks because my two baits of choice down here right now are either a baby brush hog or something that I don't talk very much about that I'm sharing with y'all today is a Yamamoto bait called a California roll. It's basically a little tiny trick worm with flared sides on it. I catch a whole bunch of fish on that bait and I can't believe I just set it on camera because that's probably the only bait I've never really shared on camera. But I throw a California roll a bunch. A lot of times when it looks like I'm throwing a trick worm, I'm actually throwing that California roll. Uh, secret out of the bag. All right, uh, and then the other thing I would be throwing if, I'm a, uh, if my guy's out fishing deep is one of two things and by the way this is what I'd be doing if my guy's throwing a brush pile either a little bitty Ned rig that's that Z-Man Ned rig, Ned rig bait or uh, or a uh, well actually two things so I consider this and a uh, uh, and a shaky head to me are pretty much interchangeable uh, I, I throw a very light weight on this so you know if, if your guys pile fishing or out deep fishing you probably got to go to a little heavier weight so you might go to a shaky head uh, I, by the way, so you'll see this later, uh, one of the guys who fished me with this weekend did catch a really nice four, four and a half pound fish, and he's actually throwing a shaky head style hook, but he had a 10 inch worm on it. He had a great big uh, worm on it. So I would either be throwing that, or I'd be throwing a drop shot. Now you guys know I'm just developing confidence in the drop shot, but uh, if you got the confidence in the drop shot, I think you can definitely get some bites behind some guys that they're not getting. So. For you guys that are coming down on the co-pro side, that's kind of what I would pack. I mean, there's every chance in the world you're going to get with a guy throwing a big crankbait. So, you know, and by the way, so most of my best fish for the last couple of weeks have been on a cloud 20. I can catch more fish on a dragon than I can on that cloud 20, but when I catch them on the cloud 20, I'm catching good ones. So uh, you might bring a sack full of those. The only problem with that is you guys who've done this for a while know is about the second or third time you get that hung up, um, that pro will go, yeah, I'm not going to get it. So it gets real expensive real quick trying to throw a crankbait behind one of those guys. But you can definitely get some bites on one, and uh, that's just a thought to keep in mind. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. If you have questions, Ken Smith Fishing at Outlook.com. I'd be glad to answer them. I try to get back to you within 24 hours. Uh, if you like this video, please throw me a like. I don't ask you guys to do that often enough. Those likes tell YouTube that my videos are well-received. And it actually helps me because it moves me up in the algorithms, whatever an algorithm is, for them to know that I'm, my videos are popular and guys like them. 
and uh, that's really helpful helps me get more views so uh, and by the way you're gonna have a lot of love bugs we are covered up in love bugs if you pay attention to my fishing footage I am constantly swap swatting love bugs off myself right now so anyway Z 521 L boat review coming later this week I spent a little bit of time in it this weekend and uh, we'll get that up and then I'll get another Rayburn report up here uh, real shortly good luck to you guys coming down here uh, the lakes in good shape lots of pretty grass lots of big fish you're gonna have a good time thanks guys